I'm making a game where you explode asteroids to mine resources, but the asteroids I'm generating are really boring, so in this video I'm going to fix that. The asteroids in my game are mostly made up of common materials, with some precious materials sprinkled throughout in little clusters, and a valuable asteroid core right in the center. In my game, you only have a limited set of tools to mine each asteroid, and the fun of the game is trying to figure out how to best use the tools to maximize your profit. By generating the asteroids in such uniform layers, it really didn't matter if you started mining here or here, because you're always going to hit the same materials in the same order, making for a pretty boring experience. The ore clusters created by the random walkers were also really scrappy looking, which along with the uniform layers made the asteroids really boring to look at as well as to play. So to fix all these things, the plan is to firstly add a lot more variety to the basic materials of the asteroid. I'll do this by creating clumps of materials instead of layers, and by adding tunnels that will let the player get deeper into the asteroids. And secondly, I'm going to change how I'm placing the precious resources to make it nicer to look at. To create the basic material clumps, I use Voronoi cells. The name sounds complex, but they're actually really simple. If you've got two points, everywhere that's closest to the first point will make up the first cell, and anywhere closest to the second point makes up the second cell. And we can extend this for however many any points we want. In the game, I use a grid of points that have been randomly offset and calculate the cells based off that, which gives a nice distribution. I can then randomly assign each of these cells one of the asteroid's base materials and fill in all of those cells accordingly. And this gives my asteroid's terrain a really nice variation. I watched a really great talk by one of the Minecraft devs about how they do terrain generation. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out, but part of the talk was about how they do tunnels, and I'm pretty much just ripping that off for my tunnels. The basic idea is to use the central portion of Perlin noise to carve the tunnels out of the terrain. As you probably know, visualizing Perlin noise gives you a cloud-like texture, but if we remap the noise so that the middle, or 0.5, becomes the peak, you can see that we get these long stringy structures which are perfect for caves. Using this remapped Perlin noise, I go over each location in my asteroid, and if the noise tells me I'm in a tunnel, I remove that block, leaving me with these lovely tunnels through the asteroids. The last thing on the list to fix was how the precious materials were placed into an asteroid. The old method, using random walkers, would create these spiky, scraggly messes everywhere and weren't very nice to look at. Random walkers make sense for ore placement in a game like Minecraft, where the blocks are relatively big, since the blocks of ore are guaranteed to be connected. But in my game, where each block is literally a pixel, it makes more sense to generate something that looks like the texture of an ore block. This ended up being really simple, I can just make some circles of ore that are centered around the ore site, giving me some really nice nice looking ore clusters. This new terrain is a massive improvement on what I had before. Not only are the asteroids more interesting and nicer to look at, but more importantly, they're more fun to play. The player now actually has to make meaningful decisions about where they'll mine on the asteroid. For example, they could try and blast their way into this tunnel, but if their bombs aren't strong enough, they might be better off trying to go this way through the softer materials. There's obviously still a lot of tweaking that has to go into getting this terrain generation to be just right all of the time, but I think this is a massive improvement on what I had before. If you've got any ideas on how I can improve this even further, or if you want to see me go into more depth on any of these techniques, just let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy videos about game programming or creative coding, then this is the channel for you, so be sure to subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.